My name's Judy Kirk and I'm Landcare Coordinator at Corrow District Landcare. Um, I've been Landcare Coordinator there for about 12 months now. Uh, previous to that I was um, doing sea collecting with Murray Local Land Services. I used to live at Wamagama and um, used to do sea collecting with Sandy O'Flanagan who's one of the locals here at Wamagama. Well, um, Sandy O'Flanagan has lived in Wamagama for many years and um, when I started doing sea collecting with Sandy, we used to go up into Wamagama National Park a lot um, to get to where the native seeds were. And um, we were, it was just an absolutely beautiful place to be. It's such a diverse environment, has lots of diverse flora and fauna in this area. You know, back in uh, 2011, Sandy and I approached Ranger Dave Pearce about starting up a volunteer working group in the National Park. We'd have a lot of um, local community members who've, who were interested. We um, started up the group, we were under the umbrella of um, New South Wales National Parks and Wildlife and we were really lucky to have Ranger Dave Pearce come out with us to uh, do our working bees and our days out and we've been involved in a lot of projects. Used to be a, a gravel pit, this um, area here, and um, it has had stages of revegetation. Before the group was formed, national parks, I think had some school groups come in and do some revegetating. And then once the Wamago National Park volunteer group was established, we also have done plantings and weeding in this area as well. Um, on our first year, as in 2011, we had an open day in this area where we did a walk going down the Tin Mines Road and up the Hume Hovel Track and back down the, through the bush, um, back down to this picnic area here. And uh, we did that over a couple of years so that we then decided to make a track um, through the bush from the Hume Hovel track that back down to the gravel pit area. So we have since named that track Danny's Loop Track, which is after Danny O'Flanagan's husband who's recently passed away. Um, Danny was a very keen conservationist and a community person and a much loved member of the Wamagama National Park group. In this particular area, it's um, known as the um, wide leaf um, peppermint gum and brittle gum uh, woodland areas and there's also a lot of, of the ground cover herbs and, um, and the mid-storey wattles also in this area. Early summer time it's just a array of wildflowers which is really lovely. Um, some of the species we get a a whole lot of different orchids, uh, such as the donkey orchids, and the sun orchids, wax slip orchids, and um, spider orchids, the crimson beard orchid as well. Uh, we get milkmaids and bluebells, nodding blue lilies, a whole lot of different flowering native shrubs at that time of the year. Well, I think the National Parks and Wildlife put in um, controls in regards to pest animals is concerned. Um, they've also excluded grazing from the area which has allowed some of the uh, lovely ground covered native plants to uh, survive and it's a chance for people to see those native plants in areas where um, it's been grazed on farmlands. You don't often see some of the diverse ground covers that you get in the National Park. Um, the Wamagwa National Park group are involved in helping weeding, so keeping out exotic species, weed species, just generally caring for the area. When I used to come up with Sandy in the National Park and um, we used to see gang gang cockatoos and they're fairly quiet parrot and you can often get quite close to them and they make this unique noise, they're absolutely beautiful bird. So they're one bird that um, uh, reminds me of Margam National Park. 
as well as king parrots. You get a lot of um, the beautiful uh, red and green big king parrots that come into the area. Um, actually, Wamagama, getting back to plants, Wamagama um, is thought to be derived from an Aboriginal name which um, means native cherry, which is a parasitic plant that's found up here in the National Park. The other animal which they, uh, some of the National Park members have seen uh, is the tiger quoll. So one of the um, key features of the National Park is the threatened species Acacia phasmoides, which is the phantom wattle. And it is only found in Wamagawa National Park in New South Wales and only one other location in Victoria. But most of the population is here in Wamagawa National Park. The Wamagawa National Park volunteer group have been key to the management of the recovery program for the phantom wattle. We've been involved with seed collection and planting the seedlings back into the bush as well as um, monitoring days where we've trekked up and down the creeks to um, find individual plants and do counts as well. Well we think it's known as the phantom because the leaf is a very fine leaf, almost grass-like. When it's small and you're walking through the bush you often don't see it because it just looks like grass. Um, so you have to actually get your eye in to um, identify it. So uh, we think that's why it was called the phantom wattles because you, you often go past it and, and don't even notice it's there. So we're actually on Danny's Loop Track. Um, Danny's Loop Track comes off the Hume Hovel Track and this is the start of the Danny's Loop Track which goes back down to the um, gravel pit picnic area down there. The Danny's Loop Track has been made in honour of Danny O'Flanagan who is a founding member of the Wamagama National Park Group. Danny was a keen conservationist and um, was a very loved member of the community. Sandy O'Flanagan, who is also a founding member, has done a lot of work up in the National Park, so we're, that's why we're honouring Danny and made this loop track after Danny. This area has actually had a wildfire come through it uh, a couple of years ago. It's only just started having some regrowth come through, but um, it's looking amazing. There's lots of plants that are coming back through, such as the um, stipandras and the um, grey guinea flower, um, some of the wattles, the silver wattles, the handsome flat peas. When we take our walk down here, we see a lot of the ground covering native plants that are indigenous to this area, um, Wilmarga National Park area. In the um, springtime, early summertime, we, um, there's a lot of orchids and lilies coming up through and it looks spectacular. Bush peas come up through which um, I'm sure have regenerated after the fire. Um, parrot peas, the common fringe myrtle when it's flowering, it is a spectacular white cover over the um, ground. Yeah, many of the small plants are starting to come back up through now after the fire.